and welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host, and this is what we have for you this week. Week 10 brought some more shocking upsets as interdivision play continued. Crewman got the upper hand going 4-2, and two, bringing their lead in interdivisional play to 18 and 12. Last week's division leaders, Team M. Vanek and McKiss Mavals, were in what could have been the first tie in league history, if not for a stat correction. To see how each of these teams were reacting to their close matchup, TNN reached out for comment. Look, I don't know what to tell you guys. Sleeper clearly wanted me to lose, and I still couldn't lose. If that doesn't tell you how the rest of the season's gonna go, then uh, look at my team name. Hey, what's up guys? It's Team M. Vanek. Why is my phone so shaky? Uh, Team M. Vanek commenting on the heartbreaking loss that took place over the weekend. Um, I'd first off like to say that I take full responsibility for this loss. Please tell me why I decided to start Ty Johnson, backup running back of the New York Jets over future Hall of Famer A.J. Dillon. Um, but I also partially blame Shaq Barrett for only getting one tackle and putting up one point, um, despite being a top 10 linebacker in the league. Um, but anyway, I mean, Team Mbani pays him the big bucks and he really couldn't deliver. But anyway, I digress. Um, it was a hard fault matchup. My hat goes off to uh, Nooch for putting up um, a good fight and ultimately taking the victory. Um, if Team Mbani has to lose, I'm glad it was to such a formidable opponent. And Team Advantage looks forward to reclaiming the throne in the Impostor Division and making a run on the playoff. Team Advantage isn't done yet. Watch out. Also last week, the Pumper McNichols may have broken their curse, ending a six-game losing streak. To see how they were celebrating, TNN spoke with team leadership. What's up, League? Everybody watch out. The Pumper McNichols are back in business. It feels really good to get back in the win column after a long time in the loss column. But we can't let our foot off the gas here. Uh, we can still fight for a playoff spot. We got a big matchup against Grayson this week. And, you know, our, our lead back, Christian McCaffrey, back and looking better than ever. We're a little worried about how Cam Newton is going to affect his, uh, his red zone carries and his touchdown potential. But it's hard not to feel good after a win like that over the mental brick walls. We are struggling with injuries. We got a lot of guys on IR. I think we have enough to fill up two teams' IR spots. Even still, next man up mentality. I love the way the, group, the boys are fighting these days and excited to take on the Tickstar Canada Bandits. Let's see if we can make a playoff push, boys. And now, here is Danny Football with his picks for week. 11. Hey, what's up, guys? World's nine best fantasy football players expert Danny Football here, back with another week of expert predictions. Look, some, something's going wrong. Uh, last week, I, I still did pretty well. I went four and two, bringing my total on the year up to 37 and 23. But my guest, Brett, Managed to beat the expert going 5-1, and one, securing himself a place back on the show later this year. Some, something's wrong. Something, something's got to change. But <laughs> we got a new week. There's a new guest and a new chance to beat the expert. So guests, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, it's Tom. I'm owner, manager, coach, biggest fan of Blinded by the Tight. And happy to be here, happy to join Danny Football. You hate to see him down in the dumps, uh, experiencing what some may call a losing streak. But I gotta be honest, I hope it continues. So, some might say I'm cursed. For four losses in a row, that, that might be a curse. Is 2021 the season of curses? All right, first up, we have McKiss Maballs and Team Big Chungus 22. Kiss currently favored in this one at 82%. Tom, who do you like here? That's an interesting question, uh, asking who I like here, because uh, it's certainly not McKissima Balls. 
but I'm not seeing a lot from Big Chungus 22 to really uh, make me pick them if I have to decide who's going to win this game. And I know that's not saying much as Big Chungus 22 beat me this past week, but um, I really just don't think they have what it takes to uh, beat a team that's really hot right now, really trending in the right direction. Um, so I think we're just going to see a nice easy win from McKissima Balls this week. Yeah, yeah. The, the, these are two teams to look out for here. This this one has some big implications for the Chunguses. They really need to win. They want to cement their playoff hopes. They're going to be without Matt Stafford, but luckily for them, they can turn back to Mr. Unlimited to lead the way at quarterback in what should be an interesting matchup against the Cardinals. Looking to McKiss, um, this could be maybe... The first week they have Saquon back. I, I would not count on it if I was them, but if you never know, Saquon's got to come back eventually. And if he does, he's going to be up against a uh, tough Tampa Bay defense, though, so don't really know how much to expect there. I think Nikis, I'm going to say it, they're a little bit of a fraud. The one loss, they, they should probably have more than that. The, the win against Team M. Vanek. A little fraudulent. I think they, they might have put the fix in to get those uh, stat adjustments. But really, at the end of the day, Chungus is, they're just not doing it for me. I'm going with the kiss and this one. <laughs> Next up, we have two Infinity and Beyond versus the Court is now in session. Court favored at a 76% chance to win. To Infinity, I'm sure, is relieved that Aaron Jones is only expected to miss a couple weeks as he is surely someone they will want to have around for the playoffs, even if they've been shopping him in the past couple weeks. Court, on the other hand, they've been a little shaky lately, losing two of their last games and frankly looking bad last week in their matchup with Bonk. TJ Watt? little injury concern, might miss some time, might not. Definitely something to look out for here. Ultimately, I think this is going to end up being a really close one. But I expect the court to exercise its right to self-defense in the face of the provocation of two infinity and beyond. I'm going with the court. Danny Football, uh, the only words I understood there were, I'm going with the court. Um but I think I'm going to have to agree today. And I don't like to say it. Uh, these are two very strong teams, um, two teams that normally find themselves at the top of the table, full of great players. And, you know, we've got a great running back room over at 2 Infinity and beyond. Uh, but I feel like they really rely on Aaron Jones over there as they rely on all of their running backs. And without that weight to carry them, uh, they're kind of running into a brick wall here. No, uh, no takeaway from the mental brick walls, of course. Um, but they're they're running into the court, and the judge is swinging down that gavel. I think it's hard to beat the defense here, and they've got one with some of the best players who put up really consistent points every week, and it's hard to beat that consistency, so I have to give it to the court this week. Moving on, we have Ham and Throw versus Bonk go to Mahorny Jail. Ham and Throw favorite, 59%. Tom, what are your thoughts on this one? You know, uh, Miguel, the owner of Undefeated Never Lost, has been quite the proponent of saying that these uh, sleeper predictions are just plain wrong, and this week I'm starting to see that. Uh, Ham and Throw may be favored by 59%, but I just don't see it that way. I feel a lot of energy coming from Bonk, go to Mahorny Jail, and quite frankly, fans of the show won't know this, but I am high on the Mahorny Jail. Uh, I think we're going to see a big comeback week from Pat, Patty Mahomes. He's going to play up against uh, Dallas. Uh, I know that's very unexpected. Dallas has been having a strong season, but I'm just kind of seeing this as a letdown game from Dallas. They won't be uh, really expecting it from Kansas City Chiefs, who have been underperforming. And on top of that, I'm just going to see uh, just some great play going down the line from the Bonks, whereas uh, a lot of the players that, uh, Hammond Throw has been relying on really have been kind of underperforming this season as well and I think it's too many to overcome you know Dalvin Cook not a little bit hampered by injury not really performing as well as people want him to uh, some may say his owners want him to 
Austin Eckler and the Chargers have started falling flat lately, uh, as I've personally experienced with Justin Herbert. Uh, and Tom Brady, just don't like him. Uh, so I'm going to have to go with Mahorny jailed in this one. Yeah, I think that's some pretty good analysis there. You, you hit on a lot of the points I had made in my notes. Ham and throw, for whatever reason, Sleeper seems to be high on them almost every week with the projections for absolutely no good reason. Um, but luckily for us, we all know the Sleeper projections are garbage, except for when they're not. But in this case, they're garbage. Yep. My dislike for this ham and throw team, fans of the show will know, well documented, very, very low on this team. So I really don't want to go into that any further. All I'm going to say is ham and throw is clearly going to miss the playoffs. You can quote me on that. Ham and throw is going to miss the playoffs. And Dalvin Cook might lose some of his value coming up soon. You know, he might be into a little, little legal trouble there. Uh, Something to think about. Trade deadline's coming up. Some teams might might want to add him. Some Bonk? people are saying Alexander Mattinson's a hot ticket. Oh, he is. I That is a man I would want to have on my team if I had a team in this league. Bonk, Bonk on the other hand, they, they've really been showing out recently. They, they've put up like the highest score in the league uh, a couple times now, and Mahomes... Had an absolutely absurd stat line last week, thrown for over 400 yards, five touchdowns. Probably going to do the same against Dallas. Bonk has a lot of momentum right now, and I'm going to keep riding that pick. I'm going with Bonk here. Next up, we have Blinded by the Tight End versus Team M. Vanek. Team M. Vanek narrowly favored here, 61% chance to win. Blinded by the tight ends, they've uh, they've had their share of tough luck this year. Some might say there's uh, the inklings of a curse there. Chase Young going down for the year, piled on top of Derrick Henry injury, and Calvin Ridley stepping away from football, losing a lot of key contributors there. They're still in good position to make the playoffs, and they have some nice pieces there with Herbert, Devontae Adams, Darius Leonard. Team Vanek, on the other hand, is doing, as I've said before, a terrible job of tanking, terrible job of trusting the process. And it makes no sense because any way you look at it, this team should be a bottom tier team in this league as far as points for, max points for, the amount of teams they would beat if they went up against everybody else every week. Like, they're just a very, very bad team. Their offensive players, objectively terrible. Most of their starters wouldn't even come close to starting on other top teams in this league. This team is a fraud, and I've been waiting for them to get exposed all year. With that being said, I'm going with Team M. Vanek. That's that's, that's a tough tough break there for me. Uh, You hit on a lot of key points um, that I go over in my head every night before bed. and at the end of every Monday, as I have to grit and bear another loss. Um, and you're right. Uh, Team Mvanek, I will also put on the fraud chain. Uh, big old frauds over at Team Mvanek. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Team Mvanek is a bad team with really good luck. And I'm a good team with really bad luck. Um, and normally, I would pick Team Mvanek. And off of this show, my pick may be different. But on this show, I'm seeing the upside. And you know what? I, I just don't think Sleeper sees what I see this week. Um, I see some big moves from players who are going to really uh, step into a bigger role this week as other players uh, leave the team. You know, we've got some big performances, uh, some players who are really underrated out there. Um, and I think we can uh, sneak this one out. I think this is where Team Van- M. Vanek's uh, luck finally catches up. Uh, I think they're going to be... They're going to have an upset this week. Uh, and it's probably going to ruin both of our teams uh, in the future for draft picks and uh, playoff purposes. But, you know... I'm going with Blinded by the tight end. I like it. I, I, I respect the pick. I respect that. Next up, we have the Mental Brick Walls taking on Undefeated Never Lost. 
Undefeated never lost. Favored in this one, 86%. Who do you like in this one? Uh, you know what? This time around, I really like both teams. Um, you know, because I don't have to worry about them personally as a, a manager, an owner, uh, captain. You know, um, and when I look at this matchup, it's tough because there are two teams who uh, haven't really... The record doesn't show the heart that's there. Um, and I really don't think these sleeper predictions quite show how close of a game it's going to be. Uh, but we've been talking about luck and how luck goes. And I think Undefeated Never Lost has had a very unlucky season. Um, whereas the mental brick walls are just bad. So I think maybe this week, uh, Undefeated Never Lost, luck turns around. They get a nice checkbox in the win in the win column. Um, but probably won't score too many points to get that win. Uh, thus helping their por uh, their purposes for draft picks. Uh, so I think this is going to be a double win week for Undefeated Never Lost. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Undefeated Never Lost, they're, they're coming in as big favorites here, and I, I really think that is warranted. They've actually looked pretty solid recently, even if that isn't always correlating with wins. Now, of course, I, I have to mention Matt Ryan literally putting up negative points for this team last week in their starting lineup. But in general, they're they're not that bad. First round picks from the Bandits and the Pumper McNichols are actually looking like they could be pretty good right now, even after those two teams uh, started the year undefeated, 2-0, 3-0 respectively. Brick Walls, they've just been a very underwhelming team as a whole. I expect them to be sellers soon. They have all their own picks for next year, and that's all they have. No additional picks. I think they'll probably want to add a couple more by getting rid of some of their older pieces. Undefeated, never lost. Miguel, defensive coordinator Miguel, had big predictions for this team going into interdivisional play. They've been trending up recently, and I'm picking undefeated, never lost in this one. Really muffed it for getting that uh, he doesn't have his own pick. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, our marquee matchup of the week, the Pumper McNichols versus the Tex Arcana Bandits. Pumper McNichols favored at 67% in this one. This one, it would have been a perfect marquee matchup if the Pumper McNichols lost last week, pitting an eight-game losing streak against a seven-game losing streak. But the matchup of two cursed teams from this year is still pretty good and I think very deserving of the marquee matchup spot. Both of these teams are going to want to break the curse. I'm not convinced that Pumper McNichols have fully shaken the curse. So a win here from either team is going to go a long way. Fans of the show will know that I'm high on the Bandits. It's never in doubt. High on the Bandits. But... For all intents and purposes, uh, their season is over. There's absolutely no way they're making the playoffs. And really the best they can do from this point on is hope to play spoiler. But unfortunately for them, they won't even be able to play spoiler here because, frankly, there's nothing to spoil. Pumper McNichols, they're bad. They're not making the playoffs. And that's another one. You, you can quote me on that. The Pumper McNichols will not make the playoffs unfortunately for the bandits they have really been dragged down by kyler murray's absence and if he can't go i really don't see how they're going to be able to win this matchup i think the pumper mcnichols are still bad but i'm picking them in this one wow uh quite the analysis there danny football uh some excellent points um and this is going to be a very exciting matchup this week i'm really looking forward to it uh it's bad luck against bad luck, and I empathize with both of these teams. So I um, almost wouldn't be surprised if there was a tie. Uh, uh, almost want to predict a tie, but that would be a little too much this week. Uh, and I, I think you've had a great analysis. I do think there's a lot of uh, potential from the Pumper McNichols to play the less unlucky team. They're uh, trending upward, if you want to say, with one win recently. But, um, you know... It's a tough choice we got to make here this week between the Pumper McNichols and Texarkana Bandits. Um, 
I don't know, I'm gonna need a little help from the crowd. How about the Pumper McNichols? The Bandits? Pumper McNichols? I'm going with the Bandits this week. Let's go, Bandits. I think they've got it in the bag. I think Kyler Murray's going to come back, have a real banner game, and really uh, show that this injury is just something to shake. I think we're going to see some big performances from some surprise players on the team. Uh, players are really going to play up to their ability. I think he's got some good, sneaky good talent on there, and I think they're going to pull out the win. So uh, let's go Bandits this week. Uh, let's break that curse. There we go. Love to see a fellow fan of the Bandits. All right, Tom, thank you so much for being on the show this week. I'm wishing you all the best of luck with your picks. Of course, not as good as me. Can't beat the expert. But thank you so much for being on. And maybe maybe we'll see you back on the show at some time. Danny Football, there's one curse that isn't breaking this week, and it's yours. Happy to hand you another loss. And thank you, Danny Football and guest Tom, for those great Picks. That is all we have for you this time. Be sure to come back next week to see how things shook out. I'm your host, and this has been Tiana. But what I'm going to say is that from weeks 6 until week 11, which are the six non-divisional um, matchups against the uh, interdivisional matchups, um, we're gonna go five and one. We're gonna go five and one. I predict that our loss is gonna be against um, uh, Jacob's team, but it might not be. We might pull that one off and then lose against someone else. Um, we might go four and two, but my prediction is currently five one. And come week twelve, when we're facing Timmy, we are going to still be in playoff contention. <laughs>